Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So today's video is about buying land. Approximately about 15 things you should really consider before purchasing land. I'm a believer in buying land because it's not like they're producing more land unless, you know, they start filling in water and stuff. But overall, the land is going to, is a limited supply, you know, especially in desired areas and stuff. So let's start talking about it. Things you should consider before buying land. And if you like this kind of content, do me a favor, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. So Bill, what do you think? What's like the first thing you would mention about buying land? Uh, if you're going to buy just land to build on, you know, are you looking yeah. for, is the lot cleared? On. Number one. No, you're, you're, you're buying, you're buying a piece of land and you want to put a house on it. Well, is it a cleared lot? Cause that's something that you're going to have to do number one, you know, or is it a, already a cleared lot, but more importantly, you know, make sure what is the buildable area of that mm -hmm. parcel of land. That's a big one. Yeah. You know, just yeah, because that's... you own the space doesn't mean you can build on the entire space with maybe there's an easements or right of ways on that. Yeah. So, okay. That goes into a little bit. Of... The second thing is, <laughs> is it big enough to build the house that you want, you know, because is the shape correct? You know, it might be really wide along the street or, and then might become really narrow and maybe your setbacks is, is not enough setbacks on the property to build the house that you want. Right. We were looking at a piece of land. Um, it's probably been about two years ago now, uh, for a client. And, you know, once we started digging into it a little bit, there was a Florida power right of way that almost split the parcel and oh wow that was why it was because the it was like one of those this is a little underpriced for where it was at so it was just weird and then there was a portion of it that was technically a wetland even though it was dry it was still technically a wetland because they had some cypress on there so it even further you know limited where they could buy now, i mean it was beautiful because it was a nice area but for what the customer wanted to do it was it was a no-go Oh, wow. So uh, that brings me into another one. Utilities. I, I looked at some pieces of land that they were great, mm -hmm. but in order for me to have utilities on there, electric or water, even if I wanted a well or something, you know, there was no utilities around. I would have to pay for the cost to run utilities pretty far to make it to the property and make it to the house I wanted to build. And it got, it was so expensive that it just wasn't reasonable for that piece of property. And it was a beautiful piece of property, but utilities. Right. And you're talking above and beyond even, you know, the impact fees for developing just that parcel. You're talking like mm -hmm. they had to bring the lines in from down the street to the parcel, right? You right. What you mean? Yeah. So like yeah. Exactly, you're paying for that. You know, that's, yeah. that's above and beyond what you're paying for the impact fees, you know, on the land itself. Yeah. And then the other thing too, is when you're buying a piece of land is soil quality. Can you actually build it? Is it a swamp land? Right. You probably ran into that. People are selling, people in Florida, especially here, selling land all over the place. Cause I check out land all the time because mm -hmm. I'm a believer in buying land, but then I go and check it out and you know. It's considered wetlands and you can't build on it. I'm sure you ran into that. Yeah, there was, um, it was again, back, you know, there was a couple other, uh, pieces of property that we were looking at and it was just these random weird, you know, it's like, I get it. You know, you'll see that lot that's never been built on in a neighborhood or what have you, cause somebody just bought it and sat on it and they'll eventually right. sell it. Um, mm -hmm. you know, but this was another one that was, you know, a red flag when you're asking the seller for information. Oh, well just do your due diligence. You know, and I'm like, well, that's a little weird. So we dug into it deep before, you know, we were actually, you know, made even an offer. You know, we had to spend, you know, a bunch of hours digging into it to figure out exactly, you know, what was the deal with the property. And what it boiled down to is it was almost completely unbuildable. Oh, really? Yeah. So wow. it, was just, it was just kind of like this leftover piece and it was almost completely unbuildable. You know, and I've heard some yeah. other horror stories where, you know, they were, it was some contaminated land that needed to be cleaned up like, stuff along those lines. It was yeah, environmental issues, yeah. you know, like I know they were selling some land that used to be a dump in the, 
sixties, seventies, and early eighties, and it's nearby here. And and you know they were clearing it out and they were selling the land, but you actually want to do you want to build a house on a, a previous garbage dump? Right, right. So you really need to check out the environmental issues, you know. And you know, like some piece of the land, the county or the area just won't let you build a house, or they'll let you build a house like me in Hudson. Okay, yeah, you can build a house. You can't build a ranch, you know, which is a ground floor house. Right. You have to build it, you know, sixteen to eighteen feet up in the air because it's the flood zone, you know, and it has to be a certain amount of square footage. So that's important. What do you think of that one? Yeah, just knowing what the soil, you know, obviously what your covenants and restrictions are when it comes to that and what your new requirements are, you know. So let's say you built a piece, you, you know, you purchased a piece of property and then fast forward 20 years, you might, you know, things may change too. So you just keep that in mind and then, um, you know, make sure, you know, that you have the rights to all of your land, you know, that's above and below, you know, like mineral yeah. rights sometimes yeah. can be a thing. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you're getting a piece of land, make sure you walk the boundary lines, get a, get a survey, you know, get it staked out and walk the, the whole boundary line to make sure, you know, what you're aligning up to, you know, because your neighbor or just, just see where the actual lines are. Don't, don't base your whole decision on somebody just telling you, oh, it goes from that telephone pole to that tree. I would not do that. Okay. Right. Phew. What do you think of that one? Yeah, that's it, very, very true. <clears throat> you know, there's a little more due diligence when it comes to purchasing a piece of property, you know, particularly yeah. in an undeveloped area. You know, you want to right. make sure, you know, what's the zoning, you know, what's it zoned for? So, you know, if you're dual zoned, you know, things like that, maybe down the road, you want to put a piece of commercial property on it or maybe even a, you know, maybe a, a, a duplex, you know, or a quad if it's zoned correctly for it so that, you know, that might be a good thing to, as a positive too, you know, to purchase, but know where your property is, you know, don't just take the word of, uh, where the signs hung, you know, in a, yeah, it's a piece funny, of uh, on a tree. Yeah, it's right over there. I, I, I get these flyers all the time from, you know, emails from Tennessee, buy this land overlooking, you know, Smoky Mountains or, you know, Georgia or something like that. So there was one piece of land and it was a piece of, it was like 3.5 acres and with a stream overlooking everything mm -hmm. and it looked really good so i called the guy you know he answered a lot of my questions and I, the last question was hey how do what's the road access to it he's like well we haven't figured that part out yet so i could own the land at a really good price but there's no access to it and all the land around that piece of property is for sale also so i was like do you have to get it right away you know so you got to make sure that you have access to the properties yeah i looked at a piece of property up in um, georgia in the mountains and it was it was a great it was beautiful had an amazing view um uh, but when i started talking to Sophia, it's like wait a second there's no power there and mm -hmm. well, there was no way to run power there. You know, it was just, it was just this little tiny chunk of land that somebody was selling off that was attached to a bigger piece. But right. the way you got to it was passing through somebody else's driveway, kind of going through this little cut, you know, versus coming up the other side of the mountain. It was just this little thing that they were trying to sell. And I mean, it was a great, like, you know, camping shack kind of hunting thing, but you weren't going to improve it you know, or put a, put an actual, you know, home on the, on the property that had power. It was more of a, you know, glorified campsite. Yeah. It's like another piece of property I, I was really interested in buying until I learned what the cost would be just to get it ready to build anything. The reason why is there was big boulders and there was just obstacles and the terrain, the way it was, there was an angle. I would have to bring in fill. Oof. The cost was you know, just to level it out, the cost was more than, you know, the property itself, just to get it ready to build, you know? Right. Yeah. And then I found out, you know, a lot of people were trying to dig wells because there's no public water in that area. And a lot of people digging wells and they're going down a long, long way and they still haven't hit water, you know? So, or some of them hit water, but they dried out really fast too. Yeah. Cause everybody's tapping into that little, you know, reservoir area. 
Yeah, it can be it can be problematic. A lot of times, you know, some of my customers, just because of the way the housing prices have gone, they're like, well, I can build a house cheaper, you know, and, mm-hmm. you know, like, I, oh, well, here's a piece of, of land like in, you know, Trinity or, you know, Wesley Chapel or what have you. These are, you know, urban areas that have been developed, um, you know, they're mm-hmm. not rural, but, you know, so they go buy this parcel of land that was just kind of left over and they, they're going to try to build a house. But when you really start to break everything down, by the time you get all the surveys done, soil testing, you know, compaction tests, um, you know, drainage, all the other stuff that goes along with it, paying impact fees, getting utilities brought in, all that stuff. It's, you might as well have just bought the other house that you were looking at because it, it, most of the time, unless you're building it yourself, like physically building it yeah. yourself, it's just, you're going to spend the same amount of money and it's a lot more heavy. Yeah. Yeah, and the the other thing you should do too is look at the history. Like we're going back to the garbage place, you know, the dump that they closed down and they brought in some topsoil, put it on there, and now they were parceling out. Look at the history of the property. Right. I mean, you go to the town's records and, you know, find out what, if anything, was going on on that property for a long time, you know? And then another one that I would consider um, if I was buying a piece of property is future development. You know, you might find the perfect piece of property, but you ha- they, you find out that they're going to build a sewer processing center next to you and you're downwind, you yeah. know, what do you think of that one? Well, because it's happened. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, in our area, you know, in our area, they, you know, little did you know, you know, you just have to pay attention what's going to happen in the future and that, you know, they put a subdivision like right over there. Um, you know, or, you know, you're just, I don't know, it's, we're kind of more of a, we don't have so much land land until you get out to like, you know, Eastern Pasco, you know, and Hernando counties, but those kind of things can happen. And then, you know, it could be a good thing too. You know, if you buy some land and you sit on it, as long as it's buildable land, um, you know, that's an option too, where you buy it. And then you know that there's future subdivisions going in and then maybe you can capitalize on that and get some money or you know, what have you as an investment. Those are, those are other options that you have as well. Yeah. I mean, let's, let's talk about that real quick. Okay. Let's talk about resale value and everything in the location of the land, like along the seacoast here, you know, even in Hudson, it happened a couple of times. These people came in, they bought the house, Mm -hmm. you know, people who were living in the house, sold it to these people. They don't care about the house. They're actually just knocking it down to build a stilt house. They paid a premium for the, because they wanted the land. They don't care about the house. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's more and more happening, especially with along the seacoast of Florida, you know, with homes getting destroyed from floods and elaborate on that a little bit. What's going to happen? Like after this hurricane that passed, you know, a lot of people are going to be like, Hey, I'm done. And I, I can't afford, I didn't have insurance. I can't afford to fix this house, so I'm just going to sell it. And the next person might come in and say, well, I'm just going to knock it down. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, those are obviously, you know, options and that are always on the table for everybody. They, you know, people come in and they buy a house and they're going to, you know, and they've got the money to do that. And they, they're putting up a, you know, they take the, the traditional Florida ranch and then scrape it and then go up, you know, because they just wanted that piece of land in that area. And sometimes that's, you know, the, they want to live in that area. And that little, that extra money is worth it, you know, to those people to, to purchase a, you know, a house, scrape it and go up. But at the end of the day, if you're going to live there, you know, it's the land, especially along the coast, you know, it's becoming more and more desirable, you know, despite hurricanes and storms and flooding issues, you know, it's still becoming more and more desirable. People want to live on the beach. They always have, they always will. And it's just becoming very, very, very expensive to live, you know, on the water, even in condos now. So. Um, you know, it's a smart play to, you know, grab a house, you know, on the coast. And then if, you know, you're going to sell it, you know, you might do pretty well. Yeah. Because even if somebody comes in, it might be worth it because if you're a ranch or low, you know, Mm -hmm. you might get flooded, but if you buy the land, it's a beautiful view, you know, facing the Gulf, for example, now you could take that thing down, build a stilt house, meet today's codes. Yep. You know, that you're 18 feet up in the air and you have impact windows and you have all the, you know, all the safety things when it comes to environmental, 
issues and um, because you couldn't find that land anywhere else. Because right. that house has been there for 20, 30 years. So that's the piece of land that you want. And they're selling the house. Maybe it is worth buying it and knocking it down if you can afford it. If you can afford it, it's probably not the uh, most prudent way to go. And the average person wouldn't necessarily come in and knock down a perfectly good house. Um, but you know, if, if that's your dream and you want to live, you know, in that area, you know, the, you know, more power to you, you know, because the land isn't going away. It's, it's, it's gone, you know? Well, you know, I, I know in some areas they flood so often that insurance companies just refuse to put insurance on the houses. So, and these houses are from the seventies, you know, sixties. And I, I know a couple of people are like, all right, it, it's worthwhile to knock it down, especially if it's like 12, 1400 square feet, knock it down and build something that's, you know, off the ground and stuff. Right. Right. But that's the whole thing. When you're buying the land, there's a lot of things to consider just because you're, you know, you're looking at land. There's a lot of things that go wrong. If it hasn't sold for a really long time, I, I see some pieces of the land. I see them over and over again. They've been on the market two, three years. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for that. Yeah. You know, it, it don't, if it sounds too good to be true, it might be, you know, right. Yeah. It's like you out of Wyoming, you know, when I used to live out there, like, oh, you, you want five acres? You know, it's the middle of nowhere land, you know? Right. No way you get utilities there. There's no way you get road access there. And so, I mean, but you can have it for $10,000 for what? Yeah. You know, you know? So anyways, that's today's video, you know, things you should consider before buying raw land to build on. You have anything to add, Bill? Nope. That's it. Just, you know, if you're going to, if you're choosing to go down this path, it's not a quick path and, you know, be ready to do a lot of research, you know, on that. And, you know, that's because once you buy it, you buy it and it's yours and you've inherited, you know, the good and the bad with that. So just make sure you do your due diligence, you know, and, and really, really, you know, dive into that. Um, information. Yeah, because what Bill just said, because I buy waterfront properties, lands, you know, I do surveys, I do core samples, you know, I make sure utilities can be hooked up, you know, power can be ran, you know, all that stuff. So do your homework. Yep. Anyways, that's today's video. I greatly appreciate you guys watching. Like always, please, if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing and hit the bell notification so you're notified next time I upload a video. Thank you and have a great day. See you on the next one.